My first guest in the program is New South Wales Deputy Premier John Barillaro, who joins us from our Sydney City studio. John, thanks very much for your time. Um, I had a few things to start on, but I thought we'd better get a little bit more on what happened this morning. You had quite some things to say about the coalition in general. This is to do with the consultation period on noise and air pollution from freight trains. Um, so this has been announced by Matt Keane, your Liberal colleague. Your response now is the coalition is under threat because of, of this potential action. That's pretty drastic for what's described as a, a consultation period. Well, no, what I said is uh, what we're seeing is a constant assault on regional rural New South Wales uh, by the EPA and Minister Keane is responsible for his agency and his bureaucracy. I, I also said I've got no, no hard feelings against the Minister, but it's about the policies that keep piling on on regional and rural New South Wales. And, and when it comes to the EPA, when it comes to saying that we're going to change the emission targets on our freight trains uh, so that we can deal with, it, with, with, with climate change and emission targets overall, but the detrimental outcome of this particular decision would mean another 25,000 B-doubles on the road, which actually is an environmental uh, disaster. Uh, it makes no sense, but it's this constant threat mm. each and every day as the leader of the Nationals, as the Deputy Premier. My fight isn't with Labor. Funny enough, you know, for Jada McCann Labor, uh, they're, uh, they're pl almost playing third third in this, in this game. It's my fight is internally with the green ideologues that it seem to want to attack the regions each and every day. So when you say your fight is within your own party, what does that mean? Is, is the coalition strong? Are you threatening in any way that the National Party might not support the government formally? My, my, my fight is with the, the government of the day, which is actually the bureaucracy more so than the ministers. Ministers' jobs is the pushback when they get dumb policy like this mm. particular policy. Even the idea of going to consultation, this doesn't pass the pub test. You know, I've got, I've got a number of train, uh, train operators who have said, you know, I've, I've got 68 trains, only two of them would comply, would mean the rest would have to be put in the, on, the, in, on the rubbish heap. Right. That, that's 225 jobs lost. Uh, my, my concern is unless you start talking to my base, which is the National Party base, which is regional, regional rural New South Wales, and start listening and stop lecturing from Macquarie Street, then of course this undermines the coalition. You know, we are the so-called junior partner. Well, I don't take that title lightly as the junior partner. Uh, we are the senior partner when it comes to the regions. We are the voice of regional rural New South Wales. And, right, and what, the government just of the day... Move on, what does that mean, undermines the coalition? What, do you, what are you saying, that the National Party might no longer have well, this... a formal alliance with the Liberal Party? No, what, no. What well, does this get what, to? What, what's the, what's what, the end what, what this gets... Tom, what this gets to is simple, is that if you keep undermining our communities, it's the National Party that will pay the price, uh, firstly, at the poll, which would actually undermine us winning government in the future. But secondly, it, it's my job as the leader of the Nationals to fight for our region. So if therefore there's got to be a fight with the co our coalition partners, the reason we've got a strong coalition in this state is because we have a strong Premier in Gladys Berejiklian. And, and that's, that's who I'm partnered with when it comes to the coalition. But I'm not going to allow other ministers to push forward green ideology that attacks my base, attacks my communities and attacks the regions. And therefore, yes, it does put stress on the coalition agreement and the coalition right. and therefore will fight for what is right regardless if, if it means crossing the floor on any issue with the Liberal Party. All right, so strong relations still with the Premier, perhaps uh, other issues. Uh, you mentioned green ideologues and you had some things to say about net zero emissions by 2050. You said it could kill or would kill agriculture. Why would that be the case? Well, let's have a look at what we're talking about. Net zero emissions, there's no plan. Uh, it, it's an aspirational target. It's a target that's now been floated mm. around by so many people. But where's the plan? You know, what are we doing about baseload power? Will we move from coal to nuclear energy where we'll have zero emissions so we can actually decarbonise the environment and the climate? Or are we just going to go to renewables where we know we don't get firming power, we don't get the baseload, we'll have industry on its knees, mining will be defunct, agriculture, well, guess what? We can't stop those cows from farting. That's the truth. And we've been, we've been accused of the impact of net zero emissions, what, what it does actually have on, on industries predominantly in regional rural New South Wales will mean the end of prosperity for the regions. And unless there okay, is a plan... Look, I just want to... Okay, let's yep. just go to the element on cows there, which uh, it's often mentioned, <laughs> the methane they pump out. Meat and Livestock Australia has a net zero emission aim, net zero, by 2030. They obviously mm. disagree with you. They do think it's possible. What do you say well, to that? Well, th th that's only one sector. So what are you going to do? Are you going to shut down the grain trains? Are you going to shut down the, the tractors? Are we going to impose a but whole... But you just mentioned of, cows. A, but there's, that, absolutely, there's, a, there's, there, there's an issue around cows. There's an issue around cattle. There's mm. an issue around all agriculture and agricultural practice. There's an issue around mining. 
um, at the end of the day, there is no plan or pathway, and we keep talking about net zero emissions uh, with no plan mm. for the future. Uh, so what we are planning to do is destroy the economy and destroy industry along the way, and, and at the heart of this, they're regional industries that pay the price. Look, yeah, look, well, we don't, yeah, we don't have the, you're absolutely right, we don't have some sort of you know, clear roadmap from New South Wales or anyone else on how we get there, but just in terms of the capability, you say, well, we can't stop uh, cows uh, belching out methane. Mark Wooden, I'll give you one example, has a farm in Western Victoria, 550 cows, 25,000 ewes. He was carbon neutral in 2010. He said if there were more market incentives, he as a farmer would make more money. Yeah, and, and you know what? I'd love to see more market incentives. That means more government subsidies, but at the same time, uh, the tax dollar is limited. The tax dollar is limited, and what are we going to focus on? We, ha we have an obligation to keep supporting our economy and in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way that transitions away uh, from possibly coal-fired power in, in the future, but that's still decades away. We, don't, we have an obligation mm. to protect jobs and an obligation to protect industry. We can do this in a way, but you know, they're just setting up an aspirational target or a target of net zero emissions by 2050, but somehow we're going to achieve that but magically do you, do you without any impact I, on the economy. I understand that, that you need, you need details on that, but do you understand what I mean about parts of agriculture are actually already moving towards this target that you said would be impossible or would kill agriculture. Well, it, it, parts of that I've pointed out are already going in that direction. Parts will, but not all of agriculture. And you know that and I know that. And so what, we're going to cherry pick some industries that could survive? At the end of the day, agriculture is still worth billions of dollars to the New South Wales economy. It's still part of the landscape. We are the food bowl, not just for this nation, but, but for uh, part of the, the southern part of the world. You know, we, we are uh, producers of some of the best pro uh, food and fibre in the world. Uh, and what do we want to do? We want to throw that out mm. the door because of uh, some, some emissions target? No, I don't agree with that. Just finally, a lot of talk about coal in Queensland. What about New South Wales? Should Liddell be extended? The, the current existence it has as a coal-fired power station, AGL is adamant it's on its last leg. Should it be extended further to provide that baseload power? Absolutely. And, and you don't have to ask me. Uh, when, when our network relies on uh, a large consumer of energy like Tomago Smelter in the Hunter, to switch off and switch down so that we don't black out Sydney in the summer. When we have that sort of arrangement in our, in our network, we have, uh, of course, a policy failure. We will need Liddell to continue on. There is a gap that is coming that you can't firm up with renewables. We won't have any new gas generators built in that time, even though there, there's possibility for some to be built at the back of maybe Narrabri and mm. if the well, if San Jose project gas. gets up. I think that actual power project, they think, will be gas, batteries and renewables. So it has its plan, but you're not convinced by it? No, but it's not just me. Talk to, are we saying as a society, as we move to electric vehicles, that consumption mm. will be lower to, in, in, in three years or five years' time? No, it's not. Consumption will increase, yet we know the generation of energy is not increasing at the same rate. So we do have a problem, and that is why, if wherever possible, right. you can extend the life of coal power generation, we should.